Hey, this nature is so fascinating. Have you ever enjoyed the beauty of nature? This world is so diverse. There is a whole world out there right outside your window. Never miss it. Always try to embrace the charm of all the little and big things in our beautiful nature. Oh, look at the comet. Look at this group of stars. Wow, these stars are amazing. How many of you like stargazing? I was wondering why does the stars twinkle? Let me tell you, as the light from a star passes through our atmosphere, it bounces and bumps through different layers, bending the light before you see it. Since the hot and cold layers of air keep moving, the bending of the light changes too, which causes the star's appearance to wobble or twinkle. So, all these natural entities and the materialistic things behind it is very interesting. We have always been curious about the world around us, right? Have you ever thought about why we have days and after that we have nights? Why do we have different seasons like the warmer summer, oh it's hot here, then the coolest winter, oh I am shivering, then the rainy monsoon, oh I am wet all over, and the peaceful spring, oh it's a beautiful vibe, etc. Then. Why do we see the vibrant seven colored beauty that is the rainbows? Oh, I had many doubts arising in my mind. Can we have an explanation for all these questions? Our eminent scientists have helped us understand many of these phenomena with the help of technology. Yet, there are innumerable natural phenomena for which we still don't have an answer. But there are some discoveries we have already heard like how early humans learned that fire can be used to cook food. They found that the burned meat tasted better than the raw meat they used to consume. But the people from early civilization considered the things that they couldn't explain as something supernatural. In fact, they considered those things as gods. It depends upon different cultures and region. For example, Greek considered the sun and the moon as their gods, whereas the ancient African tribes considered the rain as god. Then, how did the humans progress in exploring new things? Let me tell you. Humans observe the physical environment carefully and look for meaningful patterns and relations in the natural phenomena. This never-ending quest of humans to learn and understand the unknown led to the birth of this modern day science and technology. First, let us get to know what is science. The word science is derived from the Latin verb scientia which means to know. The Sanskrit word Vijnan also conveys the same meaning. So, in general, science is a systematic attempt to understand the natural phenomena, that is, the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. What is this systematic attempt? To understand this, let us take an example of the measurement unit considered in ancient times, that is, cubit and foot. These units were used to measure the length of a body. Then eventually by the advanced scientific method these units were not considered as standard units to measure the length of a body. Since the food size varied from person to person in different regions of the world. So these units were not universally accepted. Then by using the systematic approach new standard units were introduced to measure the length of a body. So, science has many branches, right? There is a branch of science which deals with the non-living things or the inorganic world. It is called physical science. The four main branches 
of physical science are astronomy, physics, chemistry and the earth sciences which include meteorology and geology. Then what is the science which deals with the living things? Yes, it is biology which include zoology and botany. Now let us recall the definition of science. Do you remember it? Okay, let me tell you. Science is the systematic attempt to understand the natural phenomena that is the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. You know what? In this systematic attempt, there are many interconnected steps. What are they? They are systematic observation, control experiments, qualitative and quantitative reasoning, mathematical modeling, prediction and verification or falsification of theories. Now let us explain each step. So the first one is systematic observation. To understand this better, let us see an example. We know Sir Isaac Newton discovered the theory of gravitation. How did he discover it? Let me tell you. An apple fell down on his head while he was sitting under an apple tree. Then by systematic observation, he started thinking how does the apple fell down on his head? Why can't it go up as you see here? Then by controlled experiments, he confirmed that every object tends to come down to the earth's surface. Then this controlled experiments or series of experiments is the next interconnected step in the systematic attempt to understand the natural phenomena. Then the next step is qualitative and quantitative reasoning. Since it is important to validate the entire experiment with valid and invalid data. Then the next step is mathematical modeling. For example, when we explain the universal law of gravitation, we always come up with a representation and some mathematical values such as a gravitational constant. Then finally, the last step is prediction and verification or falsification of theories. I hope you know the importance of the final round of verification to ensure that particular law or theory holds true universally. For example, the Newton's law of gravitation was put forward after it was widely accepted and applicable in almost all the cases. There are some exceptional cases as well. Do you know any? Yes, let me tell you. When the famous scientist Albert Einstein's theory of relativity came into picture, it in a way questioned the Newton's law of gravitation. By the way, do you know what is the theory of relativity? Let me tell you. In general, the theory of relativity expresses the fact that mass and energy are same physical entity and it can be changed into each other. It is expressed by the equation E is equal to mc square. Here E is the kinetic energy, m is the mass and c is the speed of light. So, do you think the theories put forward by our scientists are final and cannot be questioned? No right, there is no final theory in science and every theory put forward can be questioned or modified.